We have another update here, the lawyer of Andrew Tate speaking with Pierce Morgan. Let's see what she has to say, if she has new insight on the case. Come, 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 come. Are you innocent? Okay. No, I'm innocent. Are you confident you're going to There's not much justice in Iran. Well, the pack is still with me, plus joining me now is the lawyer for the Tate Brothers, Tina Glandian, who is in Romania. Well, welcome to you, uh, Ms Glandian. I really appreciate you joining me. Where are we with this case? It seems that Hi, every now and again this pops up back on television with them being remanded for further time. How long can that process continue before a charging decision is made? Under Romanian law, they have up to 180 days, which is in 30-day increments. So every time there's a 30-day detention order, they're allowed to renew their request and have it extended for an additional 30 days, but not to exceed 180 days. OK. You've taken on this case. Andrew Tate has been repeatedly uh, bellowing his innocence as he's been led in and out of, of these uh, court hearings and so on. Do you believe them? Do you believe that he and his brother are innocent? At this point, Pierce, they've had this investigation going since April. We're now February, and there are not even charges filed against them. So this is a huge injustice the way we see it. They should not be detained at this point. We think it's now crossed over to the point where it's violating international human rights law because the deprivation of of your li liberty pre-trial is the most severe form of punishment a state can impose and that's what they've done in this case and they've had a very lengthy investigation with the government's wow. resources they've been uh, analyzing and looked looking at all of their devices since april when they seized everything and here we are february and charges aren't filed so i think there's absolutely no evidence that's been presented and that's our position what is the, I mean, how are your clients at the moment? How is Andrew Tate dealing with incarceration? I mean, I interviewed him just before Christmas. We had a long, wide-ranging interview. Yes. And once again, I was struck by the phenomenal following that he has online, particularly with young men. You know, he has an enormous following there. You and I know this has been whipped up now by that community into a huge framing of a narrative that this is complete injustice. There are others who think this has been a long time coming that he's a bad human being and that he's going to face very serious charges and that will be the last we see of him. Um, but how is, how is he faring right now, given that at the moment he's in this limbo land of no charging but being held uh, in incarceration? The brothers are both very strong, they're resilient and they're holding up, but obviously um, the conditions are not good. They're in a Romanian jail cell and they've been detained for a very lengthy period at this point. They have limited access to their attorneys. Um, it's, it's not a good condition for them. You've obviously and, represented a lot of people. And as far as... Sorry, <laughs> please finish. I was just going to... I was going to say, to your second point, they're controversial public figures, but that's not a crime. And at this point, we have not been provided any proof that they've committed any crimes, nor have they even been charged. So I would ask that people presume them innocent as they are. Do they feel that Makes they sense. are being tried in the court of public opinion? Well, yes. I think, I think the public is divided, as you know. I think they have a big following, but at the end of the day, yes, I think there is a lot of information in the public. I think there's a lot of false allegations in the public. I think some evidence has now been put forth. Again, I don't want to comment too much on the facts of the case since there is an ongoing criminal investigation. However, I think there has been evidence put out, um, videos and other statements for the public to see what the uh, supposed state of the evidence actually is. It's been interesting to watch Andrew Tate's Twitter feed in particular, that he's continued to tweet. Is he doing that himself? Has he got people doing that for him? And how do you feel from a legal point of view? Is it, is it a wise tactic to continue to do that on social media when you're being held in custody by the Romanian authorities? Well, again, he doesn't have access, so he's not doing anything directly. And what's being put out is, is on his accounts and... I'm not going to speak as to, you know, the source of, of the posts and what's being put out. But I think, again, as of now, he's not charged with anything and uh, he's free to comment publicly if he wishes to. Yeah. They've obviously, we know that they seized uh, nearly three and a half million pounds in cash, 11 luxury sports cars, guns and other weapons. 
are any of the things that have been seized from the property, are they in themselves acts of law breaking, just the possession of any of these things? Before we continue, did I hear that right? Three million and a half pound of cash in the house? That seems a little bit too much cash to have in the house, even for this type of guys. Or is referring to the fact that the 13 car probably were worth around three million and a half pound. So I wonder if there is a mistake there. To my knowledge, they're not. I think if they were, they would have been charged with crimes. Again, they, they had the initial search in April and it's February. It's been 10 months and yeah. no charges have been filed whatsoever. We have an ongoing criminal investigation for which this is a preventative detention, which is why they're in custody. Again, this is the most severe form of punishment. I don't think it's justified under these circumstances where the prosecution hasn't set forth ev enough evidence to charge them, and yet they are detained uh, and it's being prolonged. This lawyer has a different energy and also a different approach to this whole case. You can really tell that it's becoming much, much more international right now. Whether or not it's just PR, I don't know. But definitely I feel like a shift from the representation which they had by the Romanian lawyers to this. We'll see if it has any effect or if we get to learn something that we really won't understand about this case. Where are the evidence, finally? But you do accept, of course, that if the women who've come forward here as part of the investigation, if they're telling the truth, these are very serious allegations against your clients yeah. which could lead to charging and if it yeah. led to charging could lead potentially to long prison sentences if found guilty certainly the the crimes that issue are very serious crimes and i think pierce actually it was on your show when you interviewed tate several months ago he made very strong statements about his position on rape and he condemned rape and he said it was disgusting was I'm pretty sure the word he used and he said he thought that somebody who does that deserves the death penalty so there's no question that these are serious charges and even in his own words they're very serious charges there just isn't any evidence that they committed these crimes yeah. you know we've also had tapes which have emerged in the last few weeks of him talking about rape to a woman in a pretty unsavory manner so what is I'm your sorry. response to that can you I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. You said what surfaced? There have been various tapes have surfaced in part of media investigations in the last few weeks, including Andrew Tate talking about rape to a woman in a pretty unsavory manner. Hmm. She's swallowing. So what would your reaction be so, to, to that? First of all, I think the authenticity of anything that is presented through the media as opposed to turned over to the defense needs to be questioned because material is edited and it's it's easily manipulated. So first, I would say that. Secondly, I don't think certain text messages, um, you know, there are, I'm not here to judge or to talk to people's desires or fetishes, but certainly somebody could easily set someone up by saying they like, they have certain fantasies, they want certain things done to them or said to them. And so there's a lot that goes into, you can't take a text message out of context. You first have to know uh, first of all, the entire context of it and what the background is, there needs to be explanation. So I think uh, you have to keep all of that in mind when you're seeing something in the media. We do. And we have to keep in mind also the judge's reasoning uh, for all this. They explained on the 20th of January that they viewed the particular dangerousness of the defendants and their capacity to identify victims with increased vulnerability in search of better life opportunities. So all of this has to be taken into account. Uh, but it goes on, and as you rightly say, at the moment, there have been no charges against your clients. And until or if that point Correct. arrives, we're in a world of allegation, not actual charges. Correct. And right now, exactly, there's a presumption of innocence to an, that every accused has and that attaches from the time you're even charged and here we're not even there they haven't even charged them with crimes so any sort of comments as to the, their alleged dangerousness there's no there's no evidence of that there isn't even a presumption of that they need to be presumed innocent and that's that hasn't happened in this case there's really a lack of evidence and they are being detained unlawfully at this point you noticed how much the language has changed at least that's what i feel right now from those first couple of interviews there is so much more emphasis on trying to separate the 
internet persona of the two brothers that wasn't a crime basically to behave the way they did for those videos which they are infamous which also made them famous and uh, what is happening with those allegations which as we know they are not yet charges we don't know if they will become charges at this point because after nine months so it becomes interesting to see really the change of language and really stressing also on the human rights violation which as she mentioned at the end as she said at this point they are detained basically legally so i wonder really if this is gonna rally something at a un level because of course the two guys are both un and also us uh, nationals so if they trigger some kind of protocol if now it's getting to that level of attention if this was the intention letting this lawyer in we'll see certainly it's becoming bigger and bigger really feels like today we went into a shift in terms of like this trial being on an international level even more than it was before and maybe it's going to get to the attention of somebody and we'll see if it does anything or if there was the plan to begin with from this somebody from the outside being influencing Romania to go after those guys it's becoming a bigger and bigger thriller honestly so we'll see where it goes another 26 days guys I'll keep you updated as much as possible please subscribe take care of yourself